President Chen, Chairman Wu, Congressman Ackerman, Chairperson Sheehan, distinguished guests, friends, ladies and gentlemen. I'm deeply honored to be part of the Human Rights Award Ceremony, recognizing one of the foremost human rights leaders and defenders of our time. I'm especially delighted because the honorary is an alumnus of mine, both at the high school and at the law school in Taiwan. By honoring President Chen Sui Bian, the International League for Human Rights is also honoring itself. The transformation of Taiwan from an authoritarian state under martial law for 38 consecutive years from 1949 to 1987 to a free democratic country dedicated to the defense and fulfillment of human rights is a remarkable part of human history in struggling for human dignity, democracy, and human rights. In this profound process of transformation toward democracy and human rights in Taiwan, President Chen has played a vital part. At age, at age 30, he courageously joined the legal team defending the Taiwanese human rights activists who were persecuted and put under military trials by the Kuomintang regime in 1980 in the Formosa incident, also known as the Kaohsiung incident. That took place during the dark days of a martial law in Taiwan. On that occasion, the League sent as its representative, Professor John Kaplan of Stanford Law School to observe the trial. Later, President Chen was imprisoned for his defense of freedom of expression and then became a strong human rights advocate working with the Taiwan Association for Human Rights, a leading human rights NGO in Taiwan. dedication to the cause of human rights continued as a city councilman and legislator and as mayor of Taipei. As the candidate of the Democratic Progressive Party, generally known as DPP, President Chen became president of Taiwan in May 2000. in achieving a rotation of ruling political parties in Taiwan, but also made his personal commitment to human dignity and human rights a matter of national policy. <laughs> Aiming to build a human rights state for Taiwan, President Chen has sought to implement international human rights standards domestically in Taiwan to establish a national human rights commission with independent authority and to facilitate interactions of Taiwanese and international human rights NGOs. Serious efforts have been made and significant progress has been achieved. When President Chen is re-elected next March, the human rights bills that have been submitted by his administration should get a more sympathetic reception in the legislature. <laughs> Meanwhile, we can also look forward to the birth of a new Taiwanese constitution through holding a national plebiscite.
this new Taiwanese constitution will help to make Taiwan a normalized state, both in name and in fact, in the rural community. For the past 32 years, as Taiwan has been kept outside the United Nations and its human rights system, there is a great deal of catch-up to do for the government and people of Taiwan. Hopefully, hopefully, when justice and goodwill prevail and Taiwan becomes a member state of the United Nations in one of these days, Taiwan can be expected to redouble its human rights endeavors. a beacon of democracy, human rights, and hope for all humankind. <laughs> True to the great tradition established and symbolized by the past recipients of the Human Rights Award of the International League of Human Rights, including a number of Nobel Peace Prize winners, President Chen has amply demonstrated his lifelong commitment to human dignity and human rights and has made enormous contribution to the cause of democracy and human rights. He is a pride not only for Taiwan but also for the world. Allow me to say a few words in Taiwanese to congratulate President Chen. A Pian Tong Tong, a Lai Poki Yong Chin, Taget Pian, Taget Ho. Gratita Taget Jatin Wahi, Siu Shen Kong Kong Hidan, a Pian Tong Tong, Dick of the Seka in Jim Kwan Jong, Pok the Jim Kwan Jong, XG, G, what a Jay Yung. Thank you. So it's a good thing to have a good time.